everybody, Ryan Jackson here. Welcome back to the 100 days of the 2023 National Electrical Code Changes. We're still in Article 555, which covers boat yards, marinas, floating buildings, docking facilities, and similar installations. This is a new section, 555.36, we added for an emergency disconnect. Now, if you're like me, when I was installing, I never wired anything within 100 miles of a body of water. It's just, you know, I live in the desert. But a lot of people uh, do a lot of these, and, and if that's you, then boy, make sure you read section 555.36. This is a really important safety requirement. Same thing if you inspect them, of course, or if you design them. So let's see what 555.36 has for us in the 2023 National Electrical Code. 555.36, disconnects for shore power. A new requirement for an emergency disconnect for shore power was added. So yeah, exactly what it sounds like. You need to have an emergency disconnect. Now, before we get into the actual requirement, I mean, let me just address the elephant in the room here. Obviously, this uh, push button that I took the picture of was not at this pole. I mean, you can see that clearly. So I'm not trying to lie and say that I took this picture at this pole. Uh, I'm just trying to show an idea of what this thing's gonna look like. The emergency shutoff in the photograph is at a hot tub, very commonly you know, commonly found installation back in uh, 680.43, I think is where they require that. So you have the emergency shutoff button. We're going to install it around the marina, boatyard, floating building, etc. It says marina power outlets, so where you plug your boat in, must have a clearly labeled emergency disconnect or shutoff device within sight of the power outlet. It may not be a circuit breaker handle, and it has to be readily accessible externally operable, listed for wet locations, and manually resettable. So almost certainly this is going to be a push button, right? You open that thing and you hit it and then you pull it back out. You know, hopefully we've got a sign up there that says emergency disconnect in case of electric shock drowning, push the button. Uh, the device must disconnect the power supply to all circuits supplied by the marina power outlet. So as I insinuated, this is there to hopefully save a person's life that is about to become yet another victim of electric shock drowning. If you're not familiar with electric shock drowning, uh, I want you to take a minute and watch a video on YouTube that's called Lucas's Story, L-U-C-A-S. And Lucas was a young man who, who lost his life in an electric shock drowning incident. And Lucas's parents did a great job of, of raising awareness. I mean, obviously they can't bring Lucas back, but the, the one thing that they can do is hopefully prevent other parents from, from having to, to grieve the loss of a loved one as well. So they made the video and, and they've really increased awareness of electric shock drowning. So do yourself a favor, watch Lucas's story. I, I think it's really important. If you want to get even more educated on the subject of electric shock drowning, I recommend this book. This is called, as you can see, Electric Shock Drowning Causes and Prevention by G.S. Cargill III. Uh, this not only has to do with marinas and boat yards, but as you can see in the photograph, it also covers swimming pools. And it's actually quite good. So it, it gets pretty deep in the weeds. Uh, but you can see here, I'm just gonna show kind of an example. It, it shows how far away from a swimming pool light the hazard can often be if you've got a marina or a boat yard. Uh, you know, this picture here, if you're really familiar with the subject, this probably looks familiar. Some other, uh, some other content creators have made slides and done videos basing their drawings off of the research in this book. So how far away from the swimming pool can you get before it becomes problematic? Or pardon me, how far from the light uh, do you need to be before you're safe from voltage? All sorts of good information here in this textbook. I really recommend it. But again, the scope of this video is to cover the code change. You gotta have an emergency disconnect for your shore power device. All right, one more video on Article 555. That's going to be next time. I hope to see you then.